Amen. So in our document, our list of presentations, we had gone from May of 2020 to the end of October. The last being the French camp meeting. We started with the increase of knowledge of May. Where we had looked, um, moved our focus from the end of ancient Israel to the beginning of modern. We were doing that because we were wondering why could ancient Israel not recognize Christ? That took us to the history of Adventism, but particularly also the history of Protestantism. And while also discussing the founding of the United States and 1619, also connecting the first great awakening of the early 1700s. We have particularly traced 1798 to present day. Protestantism and how their journey has impacted Adventism. So we're starting again, I'll screen share and we're up to November. The purpose of the message is 21st of November, 2020. Now this is my first presentation post the 2020 election. So in the first part of that presentation, we discuss the outcome of the election. Now, just to let you know the document that we're screen sharing, it will be reviewed one more time and then sent out in the media broadcast. So in the next day or so, I, I, will, um, I will send that out. So we start with discussing the results of the election. But then we move into, uh, we segue into the subject of sexism. And after spending months 
laboring over the, the subject of the golden calf I wanted to labor the point of how many people were blind to sexism in 2014 to 2019. And almost every issue that we are encountering in this movement is just a continuation of that same blindness. And every time there are cases of, of shakings, of marital abuse, of all these different problems, they come like a litmus test. We were blind, can we now see? Nineteenth of December, the US election and prophetic maturity. It's here that we get back to the results of the twenty twenty election. So there's nearly a month between my November presentation and my December presentation. But we finally got back to, to completing what started at um, the last November presentation. Discussing the results. So we looked at First Corinthians thirteen eleven. How how we at one stage can think like a child, prophetically like a child and how we must now think like a prophetic adult. This is repeating and enlarging on what you, you would remember we've already done a number of times. The exponential growth that occurred of our understanding of verse 40 of Daniel 11. How the last president's study is just part of the subject of verse 41. And verse 41 will grow and expand the same as verse 40 had grown and expanded. Then we looked at the results of the election, not just for the president, but especially for the House, for Congress, and for the states. And seeing it as a victory for Donald, for Biden is really simplistic.
Shortly after began the German camp meeting, December 31st. And here's when we introduce the document you're all familiar with, how the Constitution became Christian. We all know the increase of knowledge of the Sunday Law was 2019. We wanted to ask then, when in 2019 did that increase of knowledge arrive? Because you'll remember from the last camp meeting, a waymark is not just a point, it's a period of time. And that brought us to the Brazil camp meeting of 2019, early 2019. And what was discussed in Brazil early 2019 was the ignorance that Adventism has on what actually happened in 1888. I don't mean Jones and Wagner, I mean Sunday legislation, external politics. So we introduced two documents that were sent out as PDFs. We spent the vast majority of our time for this camp meeting and in the future on that first document. We'd already been start studying Protestantism from 1798 in some detail. But this document was going to give us um, even more information to lay over what we had discovered. The second document was titled Church and State in the Early Republic. And if you think of like a stream with, with a source in the mountains, it was going to take us to that very source of the dangerous camp of Protestantism. Then we discussed the model developed in 2019 that we titled In God We Trust. And this model showed Protestantism had two histories of failure. before a history of success. eighteen ninety eight, nineteen fifties, and present day.
In presentation two of that camp meeting, We continue with that same thought of the structure. But we show how it has the same pattern, the same structure as what we see in modern Israel. Failure, failure, success. And also what we observe in the counterfeit. So Catholicism, Protestantism, Adventism. Three models, all developed in the history of the Midnight Cry. And without human hand, following the exact same pattern. Document and began it, how the Constitution became Christian. And we work through its introduction, contrast, comparing and contrasting these three Christian movements. Then we looked at Obama's speech from the Democratic National Convention. Two groups of people both claim to believe in the Constitution. Again, one common belief. But two different methodologies forming two opposing perspectives. And we discussed Obama's perspective, which we agree with. Presentation three, fight to make the constitution Christian. We discussed the history that led to the forming of the National Reform Association in 1863. We discussed the history of the South as it, as it formed its regional identity and culture. which was our explanation for why this 1888 church-state fight occurred in the North and not in the South. And we saw this fight observed in two Northern colleges, Oberlin and Princeton. Then still as preparation to look at the document.
we looked at the three major fights that occurred within Protestantism. Put simply, one in the 1700s, one in the 1800s, and one in the 1900s. Presentation four, we're mostly done with context and we move to our document. We work through the table of contents and part A. And then we look at the covenanters. What formed the National Reform Association? And how their argument about freedom and religious liberty formed their, formed the, the, um, the, the logic for, for their goals. Presentation five, we move on to a closer look of this group of people and where they originated from within Protestantism. Reformed Presbyterians and Covenanters. <laughs> and their origin during the Protestant Reformation. Under Calvin and Knox. All during this time, what's happening inside the movement Black Lives Matter protesters are tearing down statues in the United States. Saying let's look at history honestly and fairly. And that's the same thing happening inside this movement. We're not meaning, we're not meaning to trash the Protestant Reformation. What we're saying is let's look at it honestly and fairly. So the Protestant reformer might say they believe in the separation of church and state. You'll notice everyone says they believe the same thing. inside the movement and outside the movement. Historically and present day. The issue is the methodology they take to that. So, 
So we looked at what a conservative Protestant means when they say separation of church and state. We, presentation six, the dangers of historical fiction. Same thing I said before about what was happening externally and internally. And what we have been doing in earnestness since May. What is the danger of having a fantasy idea of history? So we go on a day tour here and briefly discuss vaccines. Then we look at the Reformation again. How this all relates to what's happening externally with the counter-revolution. Then we look at the Bible stories we teach our children. It's answering a question in the, in the movement about teaching children Bible stories. January 23rd, we've reached this year. The end does not justify the means. I make the point that while we believe in the repeating pattern of our reform lines, We can't lose sight that some way marks are unique. Then we discuss the difference between our latter rain and harvest. And show how the message and test changed from 2019 to the new dispensation. What was easy became hard. Because in the last dispensation, there was just good guys and bad guys. Then we have the Apis Bull. Saying, you say you get it and you don't. Take us to Millerite history, the Whig Party of Compromise. The shaking that inevitably comes with organisation. And show if we're still blind. We have not got the midnight cry. Just 
blended the beauty of the truth with our idolatry. And we took, we took the title from the example of Aaron at the Acres Bull. And the Whig Party in US elections. February came the Brazilian camp meeting. And as the increase of knowledge grows, we turn our attention closer to the issues of gender. And where our prejudices originate. In presentation one, he had no beauty. Between the first and second presentation, we're going to contrast and then compare Christ and Lucifer. As they were in heaven at the outset of the great controversy. So in, present, in presentation one, we compare. Then we come back to what we have done at, at camp meetings before for the French world, that 6,000 years of progression. especially from Eden to the time of Moses and the writing of Leviticus. And we bring in the subject of abuse into that same context. And we look at how Ellen White handled cases of abuse. Connecting them to that 6,000 year line. And inadequate for today. Presentation two, heaven and gender. We contrasted Christ and Lucifer in heaven. Now we are going to compare Christ and Lucifer in heaven. From that compare and contrast, we're going to a discussion about the gender of God. And this is, this is all to poke people in the eye. Because how our prejudices develop from thousands of years of looking at the Godhead as a patriarch. We discuss um, equality as a, a mathematical symbol. And then we looked into history to see how this embedded patriarchal view has warped thousands of years of not just how we understand 
religion and the home, but how we understand history and science. Presentation three, gender and creation. We're expanding on the same topic uh, of the gender of the Godhead. But also introducing introducing our understanding of lack of prototype. God is the epitome of perfection. God is the prototype of humanity. The extent to where this idea has what my mindset, I won't give in to the temptation to become diverted, but go to the presentations. Then we look at humanity's ability to create. Understanding that correctly. Then still looking at that 6,000 years of progression. Expanding on that idea, we took the, the subject of adultery. Our paganism, our paganism dealt with idolatry in the time of Moses. How they were instructed to deal with it in the book of Leviticus. Then the response of Christ to the same subject. Presentation four, two streams of creation. Here we go back to the subject of two streams of information. We go on another day tour here and discuss health reform. Then we go back to Millerite history. Particularly the second great awakening that impacted especially the beginning of Millerite history. And the, imp the, the, the connection and impact that the Second Great Awakening had on William Miller, uh, on Ellen White and that whole movement. At the last presentation of the camp meeting, we finally got back to the document.
We took the three movements illustrated by In God We Trust. Com comparing how they're the same. But I would suggest more importantly, contrasting where they're different. Because what Adventism needs to see is that we are not in 1888. And then looking today to see what the threat was and what the Protestant response is, has been and is. Twentieth of March, we're outside the camp meeting. Three steps of restoration. We go back to the line of Eden to Eden. This this is different to the six thousand year overview we, we had been studying. But, but Eden to Eden as it was taught in 2019. We'd had have had for a long time now an understanding of the sin and curse on Eve and the sin and curse on him. How that illustrated the racism of Millerite history and the sexism of today's history. And in this, in this presentation, we went to Cain in 1888 history and we added them to that study, to that line. We explained the work that began in the time of the end, 1798. When we share this document, I'll put in there and stipulate this time of the end is not 1989, it's 1798. So from 1798, I'm doing the curse on Ham, on Cain and on Eve. Then we looked at the three civil rights movements that brought us to 1989. And made the claim and gave the evidence for gender being the test of this dispensation, not race. Then in April, we began the next camp meeting, the last camp meeting we've had. This was for Guadeloupe. I presented four times. 
First, the ship of Alexandria revisited. We complete the, the line for the ship of Alexandria from the study of Acts 27. But then we're going to come back to our common thread we've had since May. And ask the question, what does it look like for Protestantism to give homage to the papacy? In reality, not in fantasy. In quotes and evidence and history, not in conspiracy theories. And it's this question that we investigate in the second presentation, homage through hatred. Again, needing to understand 1888 correctly. And we, we use not just quotes, but also editorial cartoons from that time to illustrate the relationship. Then we discussed how 1888 history came to an end, those movements died. People thought fundamentalism was dead. But we saw how they survived through the First and Second World War. And again, as a connecting link between 1798 and today's Judo-Christian nationalists, we again trace their methodology and their conspiracy theories. Presentation three, the crusade of Billy Graham. The study of In God We Trust has that second movement in the 1950s. So we're discussing that history and, and the connection between 1888 to today. How fundamentalism was revived and rebranded under Billy Graham. In the history of the Cold War, and in increasingly in union with US presidents and US government. We discussed how Protestants changed their view on Roe versus Wade. And 
and at that point still the conflict between Protestantism and Catholicism. We discussed how Billy Graham failed, that whole movement failed. But soon after, those three civil rights movement brought a new threat to Christian nationalism. Civil rights, second wave feminism, Stonewall, LGBT. We discussed how Protestantism relates to those threats and how Adventism relates to those threats, perceived threats. And we moved from there to them wanting to understand the papacy's position. and understand the position, true position on these issues of equality held by Pope Francis. Who we understand as the counterfeit. Presentation for the test that shipwrecks two institutions. In the context of what had all been discussed before, we look at the ideology that unites Catholicism, Protestantism and Adventism. And with that ideology, the methodology that unites Catholic, Catholicism, Protestantism and Adventism. Then again, in the last point, we discuss again, the habit of members of the movement going into Laodicean liberal Adventism to locate information. And that every single time this is done, people start imbibing error. Even if it's incorporating a little bit of deceptive truth, it's, there's still error. We have five presentations to go, six. Two of them are the Q&As done for the French world, so really just four. It's hard to suggest what should be watched if you go back and watch. My hope is that we look for the structures, love the structures. A 
and make sure we are not losing track of the increase of knowledge. I would recommend that last presentation, number four of Guadalupe, should be watched. April 10th, an unpopular message. Again, the complicated theme of the harvest. It's put me at odds with many people. Is that after all I said about and to FFA in 2019, I'm attacking liberal Adventism and liberal society. And pe people are struggling to adapt to that level of criticism. If you just want to say Trump is bad, we have moved a dispensation beyond that. So particularly here, I start pushing the subject of agenda. It can be prof prophetically proven that gender is the test today, not racism. So we go back to Millerite history and look at when racism was the test. For the people of God. And see that their understanding of racial quality was above and beyond that of liberal society. So our understanding of gender equality must be above and beyond liberal mainstream society. We began to look at various gender stereotypes that most people have imbibed and don't even realize it. particularly around the STEM subjects. And then answering a question or a statement someone had made that we cannot tell whether or not someone is sexist. because we cannot view the heart. My argument was, yes, we can. So we had two uh, Q and A's in the French world. I've left them out. Perhaps the one thing that I addressed in those Q and A's that I think would be important.
was the question about what message we give to the Levites and Athenians. Now the next presentation, 26th of June, Information War and the Lab Leak Bill. This is kind of a, a, a separate thread, a standalone study. And again, you don't know it till the end, but I'm being critical of the left wing. Not because they are the same, worse or the same as right wing. but because they, they still can make the same mistakes and have the same, the same rebranded conservatism. So here we really took a close look at COVID-19. the conspiracy theories surrounding the, the pandemic and the weight of evidence. We also wanted to have an accurate mental picture of where these coronaviruses develop. And as an anti-Asian, uh, as a va our own vaccine against this anti-Asian racism that has developed during the pandemic. Tenth of July, having a form of godliness. This is the just another way of saying the open school. There's a standalone part at the beginning of the study. Where we discuss how the movement leadership now wishes to relate to the titles of brother and sister. Putting that to one side. This is just another layer on the apron school. Trying to get people to see this comparison, compare and contrast between racism and sexism. needs to be deep and needs to be personal. So we go deeper on that compare and contrast. And show that just how the apis forewarned us over and over again, members of the movement are not approaching gender equality in the right light.
and that progressive society is not our template for gender equality. It is where we are comfortable. But it is not where God demands that we be. The quote to finish it discusses that holiness is not in a profession, but in a practice. People in this movement that say, I love gender equality. Listen to all my words of profession. But ignorance and blindness are not practicing it. I'll come back to this point at the end, one more presentation. Twenty fourth of July. Twenty fourteen and the Hero Act. People had questions relating to the terms brother and sister. So I enlarged on what I'd said the presentation before to give some, some context and explanation. Then I moved back into the topic of gender stereotypes. How prolific these stereotypes are, how unscientific and how damaging. Then we looked at where sexism comes from, where the prejudice originates. And now you'll notice a, a slight shift in the studies. Everyone knows that the subject of women's rights or of gender connects to LGBT. And we would be amiss to introduce any topic without taking it to our reform line. So we looked at the, the issue in society of trans people, trans identity. The difference between biological sex and gender identity. and the disinformation that surrounds this, this topic. And then we looked at our reform line. The 
because this subject of LGBTQ has become an extremely politically divisive weapon. So you would expect that it connects to 2014 in our reform line. And two conspiracy theories, two streams of information. And that is as far as we have gotten in our studies. That meeting beginning a few days from now. I thought that this would be useful to share the website and a, a, a document that traces our journey. Many people have become unsettled as we've moved from the latter rain to the harvest. Moved from the easy of seeing Trump as the enemy. To the heart of seeing the Whig Party and the Democrat Party. And how that impacts what we should expect to see regarding our internal experience. Many people saying, making a profession, they love equality. But loving just the warped, rebranded conservatism. Not following in practice what God is, is stipulating is absolutely necessary. Canada, the first presentation of the increase of knowledge. The same time we're looking at, at the Apis book. We're given that parable of the path. And it's become like a chant in this movement. It's okay, I'm holding the cords. Not sure how to stop sharing. They chant, I'm holding the cords. What does it mean to hold the cords in the dispensation of compromise? In the dispensation of the Apis Bull warning about blindness to sexism.
Is it reasonable to compromise, compromise, compromise? And then say, it's okay because I'm holding the cords. As if chanting the phrase saves you. It's like eating fried chicken and saying, it's okay, I'm on the diet. It doesn't work that way. The definition of holding the cords means to not compromise. It doesn't mean to say I'm going to be sexist. I'm going to mix my favorite idolatry with the midnight cry. I'm going to compromise in my relationships and behavior. But I'm going to hold the course because I will stubbornly not leave the movement despite my behavior. Many people think they're holding the cords when they have long let them go. And they don't know how far back the path they've already ran. It's just like saying, just stick to the ship. That ship is a message. That message has no power in profession. Its power is in practice. You cannot abandon the, the, the practice and claim the profession. And then say you will make it because you're blindly clinging to the ship. You compromise in its profession and practice, you're already off the ship. Formalization of the message is a frightening thing. And we're not even near the Sunday law yet. This document that has been screen shared will be posted on the media broadcast. as we prepare for the formalization of the message. We need to consider the implications of the increase of knowledge on our personal life. In profession and practice, in a history when liberal society is not your friend. And if what has been taught seems now unfamiliar, revisit. And in a few short days,
I will see you again. Let's hold on to the cords. Profession and practice without compromise. Don't understand making people making choices for temporal pleasure. Look at the world. It's either burning or drowning. And I don't mean that symbolically anymore. A few short years of an easier life are not worth it. Your hope is in this message. If you kneel with me, we'll close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you that even in the time of trouble, you didn't leave us alone. Like a true father and mother, you nurtured us, fed us. Warned us. You've given us the freedom to make our own decisions and our own mistakes. We know you've promised this is a history of success. But in a few short years, we don't want to come to the throne of God and have you show us the success that could have been if we all did our job properly. So we ask now that you strengthen us. Prepare us. May we represent you. To a literally and spiritually dying world. I pray this in, in Jesus' name. Amen.